I'm a nurse in one of the most renowned children's hospitals in the country. I've worked here for almost eight years, and I can only say it stands true to its title. It pays good. I get along with my coworkers without much problems. Everything's perfect in the hospital except for one thing. And that's... Rizzo, the hospital clown. When I joined this hospital, I was told by my fellow colleagues about this rumor that's been circulating the hospital since its establishment. The rumor's about a certain clown named Rizzo, weird name, right? Who roams the hospital and visits sick kids. None of the adults have ever seen him, but so many children have seen him over the years that it can't be considered an elaborate prank. So when they told me about him, I thought... You know, they were just trying to tease me for being a newbie. I took it as a joke. I said, yeah, perhaps Cinderella visits on Sundays too. They gave each other a look and left the topic at that. I got busy with work and completely forgot about our conversation. In my third week at the hospital, I was doing the morning checkup on every patient on the floor when I entered Kevin's room. He was awake. And he was smiling from ear to ear. Good morning. Why are you up so early? I asked. The clown came to me at night. He was so funny when he entered the room. His pants fell and he duck walked to my bed because he was juggling balls. He couldn't pull his pants back up. Kevin replied in one breath, still smiling, as if remembering the last night's event. I remembered the conversation with my colleagues and thought perhaps they'd set up an elaborate prank by involving this kid. This was going too far. I was a bit mad, so I quickly finished the checkup went to confront my co-workers. Her name was Emily, and she'd been working here for 13 years. She was the one who told me about the clown, so naturally I thought she was the culprit behind the prank. She was in the lunchroom drinking a cup of coffee. Okay, you need to stop at the prank. It's gone far too long, and it isn't funny, I said, approaching her table. What are you talking about? What prank? She asked, looking at me with a confused look. I rolled my eyes and said, don't act naive. You told me about the clown to scare me or whatever, and... You even involved a child to play the part in your prank? She stopped sipping on her coffee and gave me an odd look and said in a serious tone, Explain from the beginning. So I did. I told her how I was going to the routine rounds and told everyone about my little chat with Kevin. After I was done, I looked at her for an explanation. She just sipped her coffee and stared at the table. Her face looked a little paler from when I'd entered the room and I noticed her hands shaking a little. I stood there impatiently and was about to speak when she spoke. The clown's real. She continued. You can ask anyone from the staff. It isn't a prank or a test for new workers. The clown is real. Or as real as any ghost can be. A, a ghost? I was a bit shocked by her saying that. I mean, I didn't believe in ghosts. I think the concept of them was created to scare children. Yes. I don't know how to properly explain, but it's been here since before I joined. No one knows who he is, where he came from. All I know is he can be seen by children only. We've tried to capture him in CCTV, but there's no evidence of clowns in any footage. He visits patients randomly. We can't figure out any pattern in his visitations. He visits the patients, makes them laugh, talks to them, and leaves. So he's just a friendly clown that entertains children while they're sick. I mean, what, a, a friendly ghost? I said jokingly. So it seems, replied Emily. But we always pray that no child ever sees that fucking clown. Why? She took a deep breath and looked at me in the eyes before saying, He's the harbinger of death. Whenever he visits someone... The patient dies within two days of seeing him. So all of us pray none of the patients ever see him. But now that he's made an appearance... Poor Kevin. It took a moment to understand what she was saying. So... So you're saying Kevin will die within two days? She nodded. You know... I almost believed your story, but now I know you're full of shit. We just successfully removed his appendix. There's no real threat to his life. I mean, in fact, he's getting discharged today. So you're saying a kid with no problems, no serious health problems, will die within two days just because an, an um, imaginary clown 
visited him. That's ridiculous. Emily just stared while I was ranting. And when I finished, she got up and left the room. While passing me, she said, You'll realize soon enough. I stood there for a minute, and then... Then I left the room to continue my work. Just to make sure, I visited Kevin's room and checked in on him again. He was doing perfectly fine and was eager to go home. At 1 p.m., he was discharged from the hospital. And the next day, he was dead. His mother had gone to the supermarket for groceries while his dad was at work. He was watching YouTube on his phone when she left, and when she returned, she called him to help with carrying in the groceries. But he never answered. She went to her room. She saw him lying on the bed. She called him again, but didn't stir, and she rushed to check on him, but he wasn't breathing. She called an ambulance. But it was too late. The paramedics declared that he was dead. I was beyond shocked when I learned about the news. He was doing well when he left yesterday. I inquired about the cause of death, and apparently the cause of his death was unknown. While I was still processing this information, I came across Emily. From the look on your face, I guess you've heard about Kevin's death. I warned you this was going to happen, but you didn't believe me. I was getting angry as she spoke, as if she was the reason Kevin died. I mean, if she hadn't told me about the clown, Kevin would still be alive. I looked up and I was about to yell at her. When I looked at her face, I realized she wasn't trying to be mean. She was... She was sad. She continued. This is your first time, right? I've seen dozens of these deaths throughout my career. I was unable to stop them even when I knew about them, so... So I know how you're feeling. Is there a way to stop him? I asked. She shook her head. No. If there was, why would I have kept it a secret? Then why is this hospital still open? Why doesn't management close this hospital if we can't stop the clown from killing these poor kids? Because Rizzo only appears in front of three or four children in a year. As you know, this is one of the best children's hospitals in our country. We save thousands of lives every year. If we shut down, what will happen to them? Setting up this kind of hospital will take a lot of time, take money. And still, there's no guarantee that Rizzo won't follow to the new hospital. That we should forcibly shut the hospital down. We should inform the media, or at least parents of these children. If they know, nobody will bring their child to the hospital, and then, then the clown will never appear. Did you believe me when I told you about the clown? I was silent. You didn't. Same will happen if we inform the world. No one's going to believe it. I mean, a clown no one can see except children. And they die after seeing it. People will think it's just a publicity stunt to attract people's attention towards the hospital. Besides, some of these children require expert medical treatments. Which only we can offer. So some parents may bring their children, even if they know about the clown, just to save their lives. I'd seed some of these kids who would die if they weren't in our hospital. I was feeling... helpless. I wasn't sure what I should do. You should try to save as many of these kids as you can. The clown will take a few, but... You should try to focus on the patients that you've saved through your work. This may help you a little to keep you sane. And with that, she left me standing there alone to continue her work. I stood there for a while, thinking about her words. I decided then and there that I'll follow her, try to save as many patients that I can, no matter, no matter how much time it takes. Years passed. I threw myself into work. During the first six years of my work, Rizzo appeared 23 times, 
in front of children. All 23 of them died. The last two years, Rizzo didn't appear at all. Me and, and everyone else thought that he'd left for good. But all of our hopes shattered today. There were 283 patients in the hospital last night. He appeared in front of all of them. Times have been tough for me, so I haven't quite updated everything as I would have liked in the past couple of months. I'm finally getting back to the swing of things as my life continues to normalize. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me, and honestly, I see all of your comments and your support as I've been talking about what's been happening with me, and I want to tell you all thank you so much for that, because duh, it's been rough, and seeing your support has been life-saving. So thank you all so much for it. And as always... I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon. And I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Donna Krause, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchok, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Shelly J, Cordy Kenshin, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primark, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Miver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Gorag Tri Magazine, Grand Moth the Milky, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Set Time, Insanity Gamer X, Jay Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kids, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kyle, Psychomel, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sam Ahai, Sashi Sasaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tali Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon, thank you all so, so much, and to everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>